I'm a communicator here. You may not like my face, but I will tell you the truth. We pay our tithe. I so see to my spiritual father. Because if you don't want cease time to cease in your life as a, as a prophet, as a man of God, so see to your father. When you sow seed to your father, seed time cannot be ceased. The day you stop sowing seed to your father, that is the day that seed time will cease. You don't understand mystery. Can we go to verse 26? He said, but ye shall not be so, but he that is greatest among you, let him be as the younger, and he that is chief, as he that doeth serve. Hear this church. Don't call yourself in the church that you are so important. It, the only thing that makes you important is your service. The day you refuse to render service in the church you belongs, nobody will see you anymore. Especially a, a person like me that understood the scripture. If you are a pastor, I put you in a certain position and you are no longer rendering service there. I will just be looking at you. You will never be important in my eyes. Even though if I have a gift for you, I give it to somebody else. I'm a principal man. I'm telling you the truth. And hear this. You can't bribe my eyes because my eyes is sanitized. No matter how I loved you, the day you refuse to render service. And hear this. Don't let somebody call you to render service if you want to be great. Don't let anybody call you. You have been called by God. And the office is given unto you. Use the office to render service. Don't let somebody else to come and call you. Come and do this. When you know it's your office to do it. I'm a communicating. If God gives you an office and you are not functioning, and I enter into your office to function on your behalf, the reward will come to me, not to you. You are a worshiper. You're supposed to worship. You are not worshiping. So I'm worshiping God on your behalf because it's your office. When the reward comes, it comes to me. Because I am coming. My reward is with me to give unto you according to your work, not according to your office. You can occupy an office and not working in the office. You can hold a portfolio and nothing enter through your pot. I'm a communicator here. The day you stop rendering service, that is the day that heaven will stop servicing you. You can't increase without service. It is service. You see, some of you that you are a pastor and man of God, say, Father, increase me. Father, I want more anointing. Father, I want more grace. Father, I want this. What Father will ask you? It is your service that increases you. If you are not rendering service, grace cannot increase. If you are not rendering service, anointing cannot increase. Anointing increase. God free you when you empty yourself. So if you are still full, don't ask for, don't ask for increase. When you empty yourself, God fill you. He fill you up. Even though you are singing that song, fill me up. Till I overflow, but you are all, you are not empty. There will be no overflowing. I will not over, over where? <laughs> Keep it there. Over where? The one he gave you yesterday, you are yes to use it. And you won't say you want to over. Over where? Before. A man called Elisha took the mantle. He rendered service. The person, he was pouring water in the hands of his master. Rendering service to his master. 
Where is your service? Am I talking to leaders? You will take the mantle today. I don't hear the way you are shouting there. I say you will take the mantle today. You will take the mantle today. Shout the amen louder. Let me hear you. I say you will take the mantle today. I hear this church. Some of you, you don't understand what mantle is. Manto is character. Manto is what? Character. If you say you are an apostle, when you take apostolic manto, the character of an apostle must be seen in you. When you say you are a prophet, and you are in the office of the prophet, the character of a prophet must be seen in you. That is why I told them in the church, even in the board of trustees, and all the people around me, I say, you cannot understand me. Because you can't understand the prophet. Go and pray. From now to tomorrow, I want to understand this man. You can't understand. I can tell you, I am coming now. God may say, Go somewhere. I cannot because of the appointment I have with you and disobey the living God. I can say to you, I'm going to give you 5,000 tomorrow. If God said, go and help that widow and it's the only 5,000, I'd rather give it to the widow than for me to give you the 5,000 because I promise you. So, prophets can promise you and they can break their promises. Teachers can promise you they can do anything because they are to tell you everything, the particles inside a container. They will tell you what they use. If, if I'm a teacher now, even though I teach, they will give you many points. Point number one, point number two, point number three. But in my own as a prophet, I have so many points, you pick points by yourself. I've been communicating. Every word of a prophet is pointable. But teachers will give you points. But when a prophet is teaching you, you pick points. I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to help you here. So, watch this. A teacher has a character. If you are a teacher and you take the mantle, of a teacher. You have the character of a teacher. You can't stand on the pulpit without quoting many scriptures. Because you have to have scriptural references. The reason why you pick this point. But a prophet will take a scripture and tell you the reason behind the, the mystery that a teacher cannot tell you. I can borrow the office of a teacher, but I'm a prophet. I know where I, I know where I belong. I know where I don't go beyond my boundary. We have many teachers in there. Do you see what I did? Uh, pastors in the house, I give you slabos, I give you some uh, the, the schedules, right? Do you know what I'm trying to do? I'm trying to pick teachers to teach the church. So when I, when I identify the two teachers who carry teaching mantle, I put them in the office of teaching. They will be teaching, I will come and prophesy. I am doing the job of teaching and prophecy together because we are still looking for the teacher. You can't understand me. 
Don't think you know me by my character, but you can't know the mystery behind my anointing. By their character, you will know them. Not by the anointing. Anointing is a mystery. Am I communicating here? Now, watch this. You don't know what mantle is. Mantle is character. How do I mean? Let me prove to you. Let me, let me venture into the office of the teachers and point to you. In 1 Kings 19, verse 16, he said, and Jehu, the son of Nimshi, shall thou anoint to be king over Israel. And Elisha, the son of Japhat, of uh, Abel Mehola, shall thou anoint to be prophet in thy room. Let's go to verse number. And it shall come to pass that him that escaped the sword of Azel shall Jehu slay, and he that escaped the the sword of uh, Jehu shall let us sleep. You see, this is where I'm going. God said to a prophet, go and anoint somebody. Meaning that, go and, go and give your mantle to somebody. Remember, Elijah have capacity as per the office that God gives to him to anoint kings and ordain kings. That is why every prophet that is genuine, you have the audacity to dish out position. I can look at this reverend and say that as my God liveth, you will be a president of a nation and ordain him as by my office. It will surely come to pass. You get me? A prophet can put you in a position and a prophet has capacity to remove you. Without even consulting God. Thank you, Reverend. A prophet put Saul in a position, a kingship position. When Saul misbehaved, the prophet said, I you see the way you tear my clothes so that your kingdom, so as so the same way your kingdom shall be teared apart. Here, this church, the most difficult people to work with is a prophet. Prophet will tell you, take this to that person. If you return back, he can say to you, why do you take it? Prophets are always in a mission to blame you. You know why? Whenever things are not right, they will be under the fire of God. And whoever that surrounds them will be also part of the fire. When God is rebooking a prophet, the sons of the prophet also will go through the rebooks. I'm going to come and here. God said to Samuel, for how long will you mourn? Who asked you to mourn in the first place? <laughs> and the same scripture said, mourn with those who are mourning. But God said, who asked you to mourn? Take this oil and go to where? To the house of Jesse. Anoint a king for me to rule over Israel. It's not true. The prophet said, if Saul heard this, Saul will kill me. So, prophet can be afraid of the one that he ordained. So, I can ordain you and still be afraid of you. I can put you in an office and still be afraid of you. So, if I am not, if I am not connecting to you the way I should, it simply means I am afraid of you. And say, Pastor Daniel, I ordain you into the office of the prophet. And tomorrow, I can say, hey, Pastor Daniel, mm -mm. I can't be afraid of you. 
Ladies and gentlemen, who of them saw? Eh? Who put oil on Saul? But look at what Samuel said. He said, if Saul heard this, he will kill me. I can say, follow me and still be afraid of you. It's biblical. It's what? The church is quiet. I'm teaching you something. And watch this. Watch this. God now said, no. Don't worry. I know whom Saul is. And I know that Saul, through the oil you pour on Saul, Saul has become a man of war. Before, he was not a man of war. Anytime an, a prophet anoints you, then you become an extraordinary person. That the prophet also as well have to, have to respect what he pour on you. You know why? Because when the prophet anoints you, he did not anoint you by himself. He was under instruction. So he doesn't know the mind of God towards what he put on you. So the mind of God can change at any time. So if you are not careful, what you, what you pour on somebody can also start fighting you. That's why a prophet must be very, very careful. If you are a prophet and you are not careful of those that you are anointing or ordained in an office, they will kill you. Uh, it's a message for another day. Now, watch this. Um, you, will, you will agree with me that Elijah saw Jehu. He anointed Jehu. He saw Hazel. He anointed Hazel. He saw Elisha. He anointed Elisha. Watch this. The office that Elijah occupied is a prophetic office. Is not true? So when he ordained those three people, only one followed him. The one that took his office. Jehu never followed Elijah. So, the one that followed Elijah is the one that took the office of... So, follow a man that you know that this is the office you want to occupy. If your office is a prophetic office, deliverance office, you look for a man who carried the mantle of prophecy, the mantle of deliverance, the mantle of healing, the mantle of teaching. You follow. I might say to you that I am not a teacher, but when you look into me, you will see that there is a teaching grace. I'm a communicator here. Now, for me now to go and follow a pure teacher who doesn't understand prophecy, they will kill the office for me. So, you will get to know that Elisha followed Elijah because the office that God gave Elisha is a prophetic office. If I am Hazel, I will look for a king and follow. If I am Jehu, I will look for a king and follow. Who are you following? And which office are you? I'm a communicating here. You want to fulfill destiny. And you, you know that your destiny is prophetic. And you are going to a church who doesn't understand prophetic office. You will miss that destiny. Imagine, if not because of God's grace, 
are we going to know who is called by a name Elisha? I'm communicating here. Look at the way I pick some psalmist here that I never knew. You know what I'm saying? You know why? I am not a psalmist, even though I know how to worship God. These people here are dying because there is no king to follow. So I'm raising a king for them to follow. So that they can be well organized and function. You don't understand. That is why I say you can't know. You see, some will be saying, hey, why is he picking people? Why? You don't understand. Lack of understanding is what do not allow you to stand. When you understand, you'll be able to stand and outstanding. If you don't stand in your house, you can't out there and stand out there. You see, there are some people, they criticize me, they talk against me, they never knew that they still need me. When the times come, they will know that they need what they are fighting. They don't know that they, know they need Jesus. They fought him. But when the times come, they start looking for him. Some people are out there now. They don't know that they need God. When the trumpet shall sound, they will look for him. Someone shall fire. fire. Am I trying to help you? Now, let's watch this. Let's go to 2 Kings 2 verse 8. And Elijah took his what? And wrapped it together and smote the waters. And they were divided hither and thither. So they, so that they too went over on a dry ground. He did this. He took the mantle. He used the mantle in front of Elisha. So Elisha saw it. Can I open your eyes? If you are following a prophet and you don't look very well, you can't operate as the prophet. You can't take the mantle. If you are following a prophet, don't follow any other thing. Look for the character of the prophet. If you are following a teacher, don't say, man of God, lay hands on me. How many hands have they laid on you? And how many lay of hands they have laid eggs for your ministry. If they lay hands on you, at least the hands must lay eggs. And when the hands lay eggs, then the eggs must produce. You are not producing because the hands they lay on you does not make you to lay egg. Today, not today. Don't be so. Are you getting something? Are you getting something? Every word from the prophet must rebook you, at the same time must transform you, at the same time must embrace you. I'm communicating. Now, let's go further. So, he took up also the what? The mantle of Elijah that fell from him and went back and stood by the bank of Jordan. Let's go. And he took the mantle of Elijah that fell from him and smote the waters and said, Where is the Lord God of Elijah? And when he also has smitten the waters, they parted hither and thither, and Elisha went through. What can make you to go through in ministry is the character you took and adopt from your father. Every ministry has a Jordan. And every Jordan needs a mantle. <laughs> now, let's go to the next verse. And when the sons of the prophet which were to view at Jericho saw him, they said, the spirit of what? 
door rests on Elijah. But what do Elisha pick? And now what they said? The spirit. Of who? You are yet to operate in ministry until when the character of your office is being known by people. You are in an office of an apostle when you take the mantle. You don't need to announce yourself. Those who are out there, they will say that this is an apostle. Because they must see character of an apostle in you. You don't need to say that I am a worshiper, I am a singer. Take my microphone, they will know if you are. You don't need to say I am a prophet. We, we, we have even some people nowadays, I don't know, I'm not against title, but there are some title that is annoying me. When you say you are doctor, senior, prophet, where do you see senior prophets? So your prophetic grace is senior. To who? So when you say you are a senior prophet, you have taken the office of Jesus. Because the senior prophet is Jesus and Jesus alone. That is why you see there is no manifestation. Their manifestations have cut short because their mantle has fallen from their hand. Senior prophet, who told you? When God called you to the office of a prophet, did he put an emblem of seniority on you? You call yourself major prophet, but your works is not speaking. You say you are a major over lies. You are a prophet lying. You are saying you are a major. It's true. You are a major. You are a major over prophetic lies. Major over lies. Your name is Lila Ilala. of anyone. That is why you see that I drove myself. I go to anywhere I go myself. I don't have a courage. You know why? Because I understood that when they sent people to come and kill Elijah, Elijah was afraid. And, uh, and Elijah said to Elisha, don't worry. You see, Eli no, Elisha. Elisha said to Gehazi, don't worry. He said, no, my father, we are, we are, we are gone. We are gone. Look at all this troop. And he said, he that is with us. We don't have human etourage. We have an angelic etourage. The vehicles of security guard that follow me are spiritual. They are spiritual. One day I was driving and people were in my car and I heard a voice. He said, we are in your boot. I said, who? He said, Ethel. I said, which Ethel? He said, we are angels. And I look at my mirror and my spiritual eyes open and I saw angels in my boot. That is why I love wagon. Because it has space to take spirit beings. I quickly took off my eyes so that I will not collide with the vehicle that is coming because I'm losing control. When you are a prophet, you don't supposed to be afraid because every prophet is surrounded with angelic beings. Let people honor you but once in a while, but not every day. Jesus was honored by a storage of people when he rode on the horse, on the donkey, only on one day. But your own is every day. Who are you fooling? You told your members 
they should put on not my blood, but you, you, you carry guns, AK-47. You carry AK-47. You have a storage of soldiers. You have a storage of, of police guards. They are guiding you. They want you strong with the spiritual band. So your members also as well must look for a guard. Because any pastor say, ah, spiritual band, and the pastor is now driving with so many authorities. Then you must understand. This band to collect money from you. It is 